Okay. Good morning to everybody. Um, thank you for coming. Sorry for the late start. There was a school uh, of data mining before here in this room, so they need to leave the room at uh, before they they did it. And we stayed a bit, uh, yeah. And they and and they stayed late. Uh, before I started, I want to thank Anchor because he helped me in all these last months with all the, his energy and work uh, uh, in my substitution. Today's seminar is given by Dr. Karan Mulaverdikani. He will talk to us about uh, the characterization of planetary, planetary atmosphere, and he will be properly introduced by Isabel now. Thank you. Thank you, René, and welcome back. <laughs> So good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming to um, this um, IIA Severio Ochoa Colloquium, who is going to be given by Karan Molaverdikani. Better we welcome. Karan is originally from Iran, where he obtained his diploma in mathematics and physics in the National Organization for Development of Exceptional Talents in 2000. He graduated in aerospace engineering at um, Ami Kabir, if I say it right. University of Technology, and obtained his master, his first master's degree also in aerospace engineering at Sharif University of Technology in Iran in 2008. During his first uh, master thesis, he developed a general circulation model for Venus, which was adapted further to study Mars and Titan's atmospheric dynamics uh, as well. Then he moved to the University of uh, Colorado in Boulder in the United States, where he worked with Larry Esposito to develop a radiative transfer model to study Venus' upper atmosphere. In 2011, he started his PhD in Boulder, working on the inter interaction of planetary atmos atmospheres with external forces under the supervision of Dave Brain and Frank Bagenal, if it's right, the pronunciation. He received another <coughs> master's degree in astrophysics and planetary science in 2012. And later, in 2016, he moved to Heidelberg, to the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy uh, in Germany, where he is finishing his PhD uh, thesis in astrophysics on the topic of physics and chemistry of planetary atmospheres under the supervision of Thomas Henning, that you may all know. You should. Um, his um, principal investigation, investigator sorry, of the joint observation of ultra-hot Jupiters with Mod Pepsi at the Large Binocular Telescope, and has been co-investigator of several proposals for the observation of, of hot Jupiters with the uh, Hubble Space Telescope and another ground-based instrument. He's a member of several working teams, in particular leading the Exoplanetary Atmosphere Science of the Mauna Kea Spectroscopic Explorer, MCA, MCE, in the Harris model, and in, a, in other, uh, working in other um, uh, in, other, in other working teams, as Ariel, uh, Ariel James Webb tel Space Telescope, Keops, Carmen, Escam, Tess, Eden, and Kepler. He has already received a number of honors and awards, and am among them, I, I'd like to, to uh, stress the world's first chunk of the Astronomy Day from the International Astronomical Union. In 2007, the or honorific supplemental fellowship from Colorado in, in USA for uh, three consecutive years, and the Michael and Jean Dionne International Scholarship in Boulder as well. Um, now he's working on the, um, uh, in a general uh, field of understanding the diversity of planet, uh, uh, atmospheres, planetary atmospheres, and, and currently he's collaborating with the IAEA, with the, work, with the team here, on, on the understanding of escape, escaping atmospheres of hot Jupiters, mainly by the analysis of the helium triplet absorption line very recently detected with a um, communist instrument. His uh, collaboration is expected, expected to be boosted in the framework of, of our uh, Severo Ochoa program um, and, and has two-fold objectives. First, to help the IAA team with his experience on 3D modeling of scaping atmospheres for the analysis of communist helium triplet spectra and then to establish a long-term collaboration to extend this study to uh, K dwarf stars instead of M, M dwarfs to complement Carmen's observations in the in the future. 
uh, and prepare special uh, proposals in the future. Today, um, um, this very talented young researcher is going to talk about the characterization of exoplanetary atmosphere. So, so thank you very much, Karen. Okay, thank you very much for invitation and thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, would it be okay if I just walk around or should I stay? Uh, is it okay? All right. So, yeah, so I'm going to talk about characterization of atmospheres. And, uh, but first, I would like to start with the conclusion uh, slide. Because, you know, sometimes uh, when we have like an hour of uh, interaction with the audience and present, uh, just, you know, sometimes we lose the track of everything. So I will start with this one. If you want, just remember one slide. That's the point of the whole, you know, research that I've been doing in the last 12 years on the planetary atmospheres. We really need to work together at different you know, levels everywhere to understand planetary and exoplanet atmospheres nowadays because the data is really sparse and the simulation is really hard to do. So we really need to work together. That's the whole point of my presentation today. But I'm going to talk about challenges first. What we've been doing so far in the last decade and what kind of challenges we've been facing. So the first I would like to talk about, to show you the classification of planets that we have in the solar system. So basically, it is quite easy. We have rocky planets, basically Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and we have large ones, giant planets, and Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. But the problem is, uh, half a century ago, we realized that probably composition of some of these planets are different from the others. So we started to separate those. And now we have three kind of planets in the solar system. So, and we call these guys gas giant and those ice giants based on the composition that they have in the interior and some sort of you know, different uh, internal dynamics that they presumably have. And uh, that was okay until like 20 years ago. And we found a new member into the family, which we call it hot Jupiters. And we call them hot Jupiters because they are literally hot and they are highly irritated by this, uh, the host star. And so we think this kind of you know, picture would give us the first kind of you know, idea about what different kind of planets we do have in the, in the universe. And then I... Uh, Wanted to move on with the simulation that we had with the data that we got in the, in the last decades to study each one of these and also put it in the context of a diverse kind of you know, study of planets in the, in the context of exoplanets. And uh, first I would like to talk about lower dynamic of planets in the solar system. So I started this uh, study about uh, in 2005, which I first uh, developed a GCM, simplified GCM to study the dynamics. And here is just a quick example. This is a temperature map, that's pressure, and that's latitude. And here is the same, uh, except for, uh, this is a temperature and that's a velocity. So here is a high velocity we have. At the polar region, we have almost no velocity, you see. So we, we call this kind of really high velocity region super rotation. I don't know if you have heard or not. But this means the velocity of the atmosphere is faster than the you know, rotation of the planet. In case of Venus, it is really important because the planet itself rotates really slow, but the atmosphere rotates really fast. So we have to put the momentum somehow into the upper atmosphere to make it you know, uh, create rotating around the planet. And we have some features in terms of the temperature distribution in the atmosphere. So developing that model, uh, it was okay, I mean, large phenomena, different places, you know, latitudinal and also altitudinal. It was okay to capture those, but we had some issues. For example, we, we, we could capture the solar, uh, super, uh, the super rotation, but the problem was, it was a slower than the observation that we had later with Venus Express observations. And uh, we could actually capture the polar vortex, but based on the VMC and other instrument on, on board uh, Venus Express, it was a dub, uh, double kind of polar vortex, uh, you know, double I kind of you know, vortex, which we couldn't capture because of the setup that we had in the, the simplified GCM. And also, the, also we could capture the warm 
uh, poll and you know cold call 